Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So as I said at the beginning of the service, in this Advent uh, season, we're looking at Old Testament history that points to Christmas in, in somewhat unlikely ways. Uh, and so tonight we're specifically talking about uh, Moses uh, speaking to God, or rather God speaking to Moses in this burning bush. Uh, maybe as I was reading that text, uh, maybe you picked up on some of the similarities between that, that, that account in Exodus and the, the Christmas gospel in Luke chapter 2. Uh, so for one, there's shepherds in both, right? We have, uh, uh, we have Moses as a shepherd who's keeping watch over, over his father-in-law's flocks. Uh, it's not by night, right? It's the middle of the day. It's, it's just one shepherd, not a lot. So uh, a similarity, not exactly the same. Uh, and to this shepherd, we have an angel of the Lord appearing, uh, delivering a, a, an awesome message, a message of good news, of great joy uh, that will be for all of God's chosen people. Uh, the message from the Lord was that, that he had come down to save his people, right? A message that sounds a lot like Christmas, to deliver them from their slavery, to deliver them from their enemies. And we also have this miraculous sign in both of these stories. We have uh, not the, the swaddling claws and laying in a manger of, of the baby Jesus, but we have this, this bush that is burning up but is not consumed. It's not destroyed by the fire. And now maybe, maybe you notice some of these similarities or maybe you're thinking, Pastor, this is, this is kind of a stretch, right? This is, the, there are some similarities, there are some things that sound similar, but, but these stories are not very much alike. Uh, and I could, I could say that that's true until we understand uh, the main character in both of these stories. Uh, the main character, the, the emphasis in both these stories is the same person. Uh, we have to understand who is this angel of the Lord that's speaking to Moses out of the bush. Uh, usually when we think of the word angel, we think of these created heavenly beings, right? Uh, these, these servants of God that he sends out to do his bidding, to deliver messages, uh, to aid his people. But that word angel, it literally means messenger. And so there are a few instances in the Old Testament where we see this, this angel of the Lord and where we, we understand that this is not a created being, but this is, this is Jesus. This is the second person of the Trinity. This is Jesus speaking to Moses out of this bush before he takes on human flesh, before he, he, his incarnation, before he's born of Mary. So this person, this, this God speaking to, to Moses out of the bush is the same person that, that Mary lays in the manger on that first Christmas night. Uh, the same Jesus who, who took this form of fire in the bush is the same one who comes in the flesh. It's the second person of the Trinity. And so when we understand this, when we, when we understand what, what Scripture is saying here, that it's saying that God is speaking to Moses from the bush, uh, this opens up a lot more similarities bet between this account in Exodus and between uh, the, the account of Jesus' birth in Luke chapter 2. Uh, so why a burning bush, though? Why does Jesus appear to Moses in the form of a burning bush? He makes himself visibly present. This is our infinite Almighty, all glorious God, all power and majesty belongs to him. Uh, so he uh, makes himself visible in whatever way he chooses. And here he chooses a, a flame within a bush that doesn't consume, that doesn't destroy, instead of fire that comes to reveal God's truth. Uh, part of it is because Jesus can't appear to him in the fullness of his glory. Uh, Moses would later be told in Exodus that no one can see the face of God and live. And Moses instinctually knows this. Even in our text, he hides his face because he's scared to look at God. And so he presents himself to, to Moses as something, yes, miraculous, something that gets his attention, something that communicates part of his glory, but, but also is something that doesn't destroy him. Right, so what God does here, Jesus, he sets aside the, the fullness of his glory, the fullness of his power uh, to, to communicate, to interact with this man that he is calling to be his servant. Now I'm sure there you can see a lot of similarities between that and what Jesus does at Christmas. Right, when Jesus takes on human flesh, when he unites himself to a human body like we have, this isn't temporary like it was with the bush, this is eternal. Jesus continues to have this this human nature about him. He unites himself to this human nature. And, and, and he does this in order to be among us, right? And in this, he, he comes to setting aside, again, that full use of his divine power and glory, setting that aside so that he can come down and, and veils that glory in human flesh and blood, in, in, in his humanity. 
He does this to be among us. He does this to deliver this wonderful message of grace and salvation. He doesn't come with this fire that, that destroys, with this, this anger and righteous uh, destruction to, to burn up all the sinners. He comes to, to live in our place, to be one of us, to redeem us. And that's the other huge similarity here between this Exodus account and between uh, the Christmas story is that Jesus comes in both of these stories for the same exact purpose. Uh, in the Old Testament, Jesus comes to save his people from slavery. And like we talked about with our children's message, this is not a, a physical slavery. This is a, a spiritual slavery. Uh, on our own, we cannot please God. There is nothing that we can do uh, to earn his favor, to show him uh, that, that we're sorry, to do enough to work off our sin. Uh, on our own, we are slaves to serving ourselves. We are slaves to being the enemies of God. But yet, that's why Jesus came. Right, to be the, the Savior. Joseph and Mary, they're, they're told what Jesus' name is going to be. Uh, they say, the, the angel says, you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And that's exactly what he does. He comes to free us from that sin that so easily ensnares us and tangles us up. He comes to free us from the power of Satan, uh, an enemy that's so powerful we can never defeat him on our own. He comes to deliver us from the, the, the grip that, that sin has on us sin that makes it impossible for us to have a right relationship with god he came to live for us right in our place he took on human flesh so that he could die in our stead so that he could uh, uh, do this this great exchange make this great exchange happen where he says i'm gonna live perfectly i'm gonna earn your your righteousness i'm gonna uh earn holiness and then i'm gonna exchange that holiness for your sin and i'm gonna go to the cross and i'm gonna pay for it i'm gonna suffer and I'm going to die in your place. And so now, just like the Israelites, we get to live with this promise. Knowing that Jesus has done this, what does he tell Moses here? He says, I'm going to bring you guys out of this slavery and into this promised land, a land that is, that is large, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of blessing. We live with that same promise, right? Our slavery from sin has been broken. And so God tells us right now, this is your, your time of wandering in the wilderness. Your, the rest of the, your life on this earth is you wandering in the wilderness, not knowing when we get to go to our promised land, not understanding exactly what that promised land looks like, but knowing the promise of God that it's wonderful, that it's a land without sin. It's a land that's not corrupted. It's full of blessing where there is no sin, where there is no sorrow, where there are no tears. And so we live with that hope. We live with that confidence knowing, yes, God is taking me to the promised land, but I don't know when, and I don't know what it looks like yet. This is exactly why Jesus comes, right? To enable us to live with this promise, to live with this confidence that we are going to heaven. Uh, It's the same Jesus who says to Moses, tell everyone that I am has sent you. And it's the same Jesus who throughout his earthly ministry repeats that same line in so many instances, right? He says, I am the good shepherd, He says, I am the light of the world. In our gospel text for tonight, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. This is the same Jesus who in the garden of Gethsemane, his enemies ask, are are you Jesus? Are you the one we're looking for? And he says, I am. And there's so much power, there's so much glory just in in, in authority in what he says that these people who have come to arrest him are knocked back and they fall to the ground. This is the same Jesus who, because he humbled himself, because he, he set aside the full use of that divine power and glory, because he became one of us, was able to die for us. He was able to redeem us. He was able to win our victory for us. That's his love for you. That's what he has come to do. Uh, both in our Old Testament text, to free people from physical slavery, and in the, the greatest way at Christmas, to free us from our slavery to sin and our slavery to death. So when you look at the burning bush, uh, and when you read this story, when you, maybe it comes up in, in a children's devotion, or when you hear about your kids talking about it after Sunday school, uh, remember that this is not just a, a Sunday school story. This is God's word that is written for our learning, for our understanding, and, and it is a prophecy. It's a sign that points to the Lord's coming at Christmas, a sign that, that our Savior comes not to consume, not to destroy, not with righteous anger, but that he comes to reveal the truth. He comes to be the light of the world. He comes to tell us and show us that that God himself has come down to save his people, to save us. Amen. Please rise for the blessing. The peace which surpasses all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
Amen.